Connor's a massive Cher fan. He'll sing you a bit if you like. One, two, three. If I could turn back time, if I could find a way, I'd take back those words that I've heard you, you'd say. If I could reach those stars, I'd give them all to you. Then you love me, love me. So this is this is Connor and I'm Tracy, and we're in Shindow. We've had no encouragement really from our doctors. I mean, basically, he was diagnosed as a Leber's case. Uh, they would see us initially once every 12 months, and now it was just uh, if his eyes deteriorated because his eye presses are so hard. And that's another thing he's stopped since he's been here too. The doctor told us that he had sight in the first couple of months and he lost it when he was a baby. Now, I would believe that because you, if you look at some of our baby photos right up until about th four months, um, he certainly had nystagmus, but um, you, would, you would look at his photos and, yes, he's, he's tracking you know, he, he's, he's looking um, and smiling at the camera and that sort of thing. So, yeah, I, I'm, I'm not comfortable with the Leber's diagnosis. The, I mean, it's supposed to be a recessive gene problem and there's nothing in our family. There's nothing in my husband's family, grandparents, anywhere. He's got Mountbatten, a Mountbatten Brailler. He's got Jaws. Uh, he's got the Daisy Player. He's, he's got all the equipment that he, he needs and he's in mainstream so he's not in a special needs school. He doesn't know how to use a knife and fork together. You know, it's just all these little things that, that we take for granted, you know, and just a little bit of sight could do that and change his world. He's a study at the moment because they've only treated a couple of Leber's cases. He, he has been diagnosed at home with Leber's. Uh, it's been a bit contradictory here. Um, they said it would, they thought that it could be Leber's but they were leaning towards optic nerve atrophy. Uh, but I said to them, look, I wasn't happy with the Leber's diagnosis right from when we were given that at home. So to me, a diagnosis doesn't matter. He had acupuncture and um, electric wave therapy. Um, he had an IV to start with and then he went to spinal and then you know, he had um, he had half IV and half spinals, but they alternated. Mm. He just had his last spinal on Monday. He only had a tiny bit of light perception and nothing functional, um, but now he's really responding to light. So that has been really positive, and we noticed that after his very first treatment, uh, the power went out on the on the bedside uh, lamp, and it didn't make any noise. It just went out, and he said, "Why'd you turn the light off?" And I, oh, the power went off, so I went and turned those lights on. And he said, that's better, it's not dark anymore. Uh, you know, he's never, he's never verbalised that before. I mean, he could be at home in his room and I wouldn't realise, but he'd be sitting in the dark still playing with his toys. You know, he's never been able to verbalise it, but now he can. So that's a pretty big, pretty big step. I couldn't believe it. I, I couldn't believe it. He just said, why did you turn the light off? Um, yeah, it was just spontaneous. And then I ran out of the room <laughs> to tell anybody that was out there that was listening um, that it had just happened. I think it's going to take a bit of time because if he is starting to develop anything, he's not going to know how to verbalise it because he's never really had it. I mean, it, he was supposed to have had sight when he was born, but... 
he couldn't talk, so he couldn't tell us whether he could see or he couldn't. So it's just, you know, if he does develop any sight, it's a skill that he's going to have to to relearn, basically. I noticed today when he went back for his, his eye exams, well, the first time they kept saying, keep your eyes still, keep your eyes still, and I kept saying, he can't keep his eyes still, he's got nystagmus. They were just, and the more upset he was getting, the more out of control they were. But we just said to him today, keep your eyes still. And I stood behind uh, the, the man doing the exam. And he was, he was really quite still, which was really good. So yeah, I've, I'd noticed the nystagmus slowed right down. You've got to be tough to start with. Uh, you, you've got to, you've got to basically stand up for what you want. I mean, they didn't want to give him a general anaesthetic because he's a big boy, he, he would cope, but he's never had an invasive procedure like what he's had. And I know what his pain level's like. Um, and I just, if you want something, you have to insist on it. Um, and you've just got to be firm. Um, but I would like to see more. I, I would like him to see more. I want him to come back and give it one more go and see what we get from that next step. I've already discussed it with my husband. We are definitely looking at the next six months, but I'd be more than happy to come back and do it again if, you know, even if he only got up to 15 centimetres, even if he was legally blind, it's better than what he had to start with, you know. He could still do up his shoelaces and he could still pick out his own clothes and, you know, anything's a bonus, really. Just try and live, you know, a day or a week in our lives um, to see how much he struggles you know, with everyday things. And it, I think it's a lot of ignorance that's not getting it done where it needs to be done. Let's try and go. That's what I think.